So one of the things I was thinking about, Kelly, in terms of how do we how do we see this wave um, happen is, in some ways, I think uh, Biden and his uh, his folks, we'll just I'll call them folks, um, are are creating that and generating that wave for us. I am as frustrated as uh, any other supporter of Trump, uh, seeing him basically being gagged uh, by uh, a judge when he has a First Amendment right to speak. It just goes to how they are continually trying to change the rules of the game, so to speak, um, to uh, to keep him silenced and to uh, defeat him in this election. Those kinds of things are actually galvanizing the masses. It's 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 exciting us to be uh, to push back and say that is not the America we want. That is not the America we believe in. That is not the America we we pay our taxes to support. That is not the America that our soldiers go go out and bleed and die for. That is not the America that our founders. Um, uh, established, that is not the America we want to pass down to our children. And and so the more that they do this, the more they are um, the more they are inspiring and emboldening uh, Americans across the country, uh, including Americans who traditionally were on uh, opposite sides of uh, of if not the political aisle, um, uh, the social values aisle, whatever you want to call it. Um, to come and coalesce behind the president because we want to make a statement uh, to those elitists, to those people who think that they can puppeteer uh, the strings of government and control um, our lives and intimidate us into silence that, no, we will not be silent. Um, We know what our rights are. We know the America that um, our soldiers have died for, and that's the America we want to pass down to our children, not this America that you are trying to create where you're persecuting you know, political opponents um, and, and using um, a system of justice in a way that is so corrupt. Uh, it just boggles the mind, and we are losing... In, in addition to all of that, we're losing our uh, our ability to speak with authority to our uh, to other nations about justice, about freedom, about rights, because of what we're doing right now. We have totally undermined, um, I think, uh, our standing and, and what we've done before the American people and before the world. And our founders warned about this. So remember, yep. in the beginning, they said it's incumbent on us to create this form of government because the ruling party, the ruling class in England has committed these abuses against the people and government can only lead by the consent of those governed. And therefore, we have an obligation to do something. And then they also said, now that we've created this government, it's up to us to then have the obligation to manage and lead it here. And I think it is because of apathy, complacency, um, maybe being too busy, that we have become a little bit complicit in what's happening. And I think we have to take ownership of that. When we have the lowest voter turnout in history, when elections are being decided by 18, 20% of a population. You're talking about in Alaska, lowest voter turnout? Yeah, in Alaska. But we weren't the only state. There were other jurisdictions that, while some places had really high voter turnout in our last election cycle, 2022, other states had, toss-up states had really low turnout. And then you talk about local races, which, by the way, are the building ground, the building blocks and the breeding ground for politicians and leaders to then move up to state and national politics. Decisions are being made by a fifth of the population. And our founders would say that's the problem. In fact, one of the people who wrote an extremely compelling book, which 
these two political science nerds have read, but I think most of our population hasn't. He said the the greatest risk to this new American system of government, which has never been created before, nothing like this has ever been created, and I don't think anything could ever be created since. He said the greatest risk is not from the outside. He, he said you will have a lot of political enemies. You will have your battles and wars, which we've done pretty well in, guys. He said the greatest threat to, threat to America will be from the inside. It'll be from Americans who who will not responsibly handle what has been given to them. And through taxation, through not managing the government that they have, they will get drunk on power or drunk on complacency, and they will let the whole thing fall apart. You're talking about the Tocqueville? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was a great paraphrase. Yeah, nice Alexis pop the, nice the, pop quiz there, yeah, taking the you all the way back to college. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's 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 so important because, you know, the point that he he, he makes is the, the beauty of the American experiment, but also the, the fragility of it, right? And we have, I think, lost an appreciation for how fragile freedom is. Um, and and we're, But we're seeing it right now, right? We saw it with COVID. Uh, we're seeing it with what... Uh, the Biden administration has done in, in so many ways, not just um, within our educational system, but also obviously with what they're doing to the president. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's an awakening, I think, for, for all of us. And so what do we do? We stand. How do we stand? We use our voices. We get up, we go out there, we advocate for uh, the America that the traditional values that that we believe in that have made America the the greatest civilization, the greatest nation ever in history, um, and we vote, we vote. Whether our votes are counted, whether there is chicanery that happens, that's on whoever does it. But we, I think, always have to 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 take ownership of our responsibility sure. and say whatever whatever the outcome. It's not going to be because we failed to engage in our civic responsibilities to uh, advocate for what we believe uh, America should be um, and is about. I think another thing we can do is get involved. Yeah. So a lot of times what I'll hear is, well, that's uncomfortable and that's awkward. Yes, that's correct. I just want to validate that. And as you've heard me say to our kids many times, life is a series of awkward moments separated by snacks. Well, for you, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I excel in the awkward. Yes, you do. I've I've made it. I've made it one of my sub expertise. I should add that to my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Keep us all entertained. <laughs> yes, but if we just acknowledge that if something's going to go awkward today then everything just gets a lot easier. So now door knocking, for example, or cold calling people becomes a lot easier when you realize it's just as awkward for me as it feels for you. So if you just jump in to the swimming pool of awkward, this whole thing warms up if you just get in and start swimming. So call that person who you want to be supporting or the thing, the candidate, the campaign that you want to win and say, how can I help? There's all kinds of ways to help, even being a keyboard warrior and getting the word out on social media, not to your 92 followers, but to posting in social media groups and places where people are actually there and listening, that can influence things. But making calls, phone banking, door knocking, stretching yourself and giving some dollars, even $5 will really help. These are the kind of things that actually make elections get across the finish line and win if we want to take a stand. And then there are other issues and causes to get involved in that help push the nation forward as well. But 2024 is going to be a really critical race. And again, I don't think that the left is winning because they win. As my mom would tell me growing up playing sports, honey, you didn't win, you didn't lose that, or they didn't win that game, you lost that game. And you can decide how you play. And it's not always that, well, you know, they just outplayed us. That's not how it goes. We have a choice in how this goes. Yeah. And so I'm 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 really optimistic. I'm optimistic for 2024. And um, I mean, I I I I don't know if you're feeling it, but I'm just I'm I'm feeling it as I'm I'm watching the news and reading articles there's there's people are a, coming together yeah, in a new there's way there's a coalescing mm -hmm. there's something that's happening that i i think can be and will be very positive um, going forward as as we come together as a nation and agree like we may have our differences but we all agree 
that what we're seeing right now that's not us and that's, that's not, not america we're gonna be. Yeah. right we want leaders who are agreed on what america is and what it means for example is that we have a border <laughs> yeah right? right just the basics just the, the basics, basics. Yeah. <laughs> like and and it means that we're not getting taxed at such an absurd percentage that we can't feed our families like super basics like that it means that as parents like we actually have the right to parent our, our children, children and 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 <laughs> not have the educational system have secret conversations with them about you know we didn't delegate out we didn't surrender our parental rights without anybody telling us 